Okay, so this is my new toy, and today we're going to talk about some stuff about how these old trucks and cars are different than the modern day ones. Um, first off, notice it's got a wooden bed, and the wood is strapped in on the top with these uh, basically little carriage bolts that go through. And on the underside, there's some bracers and beams that all hold it up and support it together. Uh, if you also notice right there, it's uh, wood on metal on wood on metal. That's how it's all strapped together. Kind of interesting. In the back, we've got one set of leaves holding the wheels up. And in this particular instance, we can see surface rust this kind of stuff going on here. It's got to be replaced. There's a lot of wood in this thing. And I'm trying to figure out this top. Uh, this is metal here with wood on the cross braces. And I believe this is supposed to be a pivot point right here that has been uh, made permanent. So I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look up some stuff on that. Uh, I think this thing's in pretty good shape. The motor is inside the doghouse here. So some things to notice. This is the heater. This is the aftermarket heater that was available back then. So what happens is there's a little door right here. In cold weather you open that up and when the engine's running the fan blows warm air through this linear ram and on into the passenger compartment. Got a single carburetor right here. The air is drawn in here, up draft in. No fuel pump, this is gravity feed. This is the fuel tank right here. And there's a sediment bowl right here, so there's not even a fuel filter on this thing unless there's one right there. I haven't really looked at that yet. Um, and if you paid real close attention, you just saw a drop of fuel drip down there. And which explains why these things always smell like fuel. Here's a distributor. And this is not like your modern distributors, even, even a distributor from the 50s or 60s, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. I'll go over some of the things so that we can understand how simple this is and, and, and how far things have evolved uh, in that time. Radiator on top. This is the coolant, coolant fill right on top. This is the gas fill right here in the middle of the windscreen. And I'll show you this latch. The latch, push it forward, and the door pops open. And the doors are sprung on this guy. I'm going to have to readjust the hinges when I put it all together. Oh, people were small back then. Somebody in my frame is kind of hard to get in here. And I don't think I'm horribly fat. So let's talk about the controls. Just like a modern. This is the clutch. Oh, whoops, it's the clutch. That's the brake. This right here is the gas pedal, just a pin up here on top. That's the starter. This is the emergency brake. This is the ignition key. That's the fuel indicator. It's just a float in there. I'll rock it a little bit and you can see it move. Um, this is the ammeter, tells you whether you're charging or discharging. And speedometer. I've got 0.6 miles on it since I've bought it and it's got 79,000 miles on it total. I don't know if that's a rollover or not. This little control right here is a neat little guy. This is sort of like an idle adjust and choke. Over here, this is the horn button. I'm missing the horn. I'm gonna have to replace that. This is the light switch. Left is low beams, center is off, right is high beams. Okay, up here, this is actually the uh, spark advance. So uh, on a, even a 50s or 60s car, there's a vacuum advance. You'd romp the gas and it'd start to go. And once it picked up speed, the, the vacuum would, would advance your um, timing for you. This is all manually done. So the Ford user's manual says that when you are... Um, starting the car cold, make sure it's retarded all the way. 
uh, so you don't cause an engine knock or cause it to kick back. Uh, here in my seat with me is a combination tire tool and starter. So if I need to hand crank for whatever reason, I can hand crank. Don't worry about this other junk in here. This is my new battery charger because this is a six volt system with a positive ground. And the little door I was talking about is right there to let heat in. And right here is the fuel petcock. So fuel is off right now. Let's turn on fuel. And let's put this thing in neutral. Oh, notice we got this here. Um, reverse, first, second, third is the gear pattern. This is an instrument panel light. If I just push it and turn it, it turns on and let off. And it turns off. Now, an interesting thing to notice, this had me fooled when the first time I started it, is even with the ignition key off, the starter runs. So the first thing we do, oh, and this little lever here is a, um, I don't know, it's an idle adjust actually. Um, you could actually use it as a cruise control if you were so inclined. I will move it down and watch the foot pedal down here. See that? So they're directly linked. And so when you start this thing, you give it just a little bit of gas. And, and what they say is give it just until you see feel the, the throttle drop. Oh, notice the floors are wood in here also. All right. Now we turn our ignition on. That just turned on my ignition. And give it some choke. Let's see, turn this up. And let's see if we can start this bad boy today. There we go. We're starting. It's a warm day. It was easy to start. again. It's easy to flood the guy.
close I am to my cycle. I'll talk to somebody who owns one. Another neat thing to notice is we can kick out the front window. We can prop it open to let air in there. And we'll shut it off. For now. Now, my ammeter is doing all right. It hasn't pegged all the way negative, even though it doesn't seem to be working as well as it should be. Um, we'll stop this for now.